Hello, I'm Pritam Koda and in this video I will show you a few things about the World Ray hit note in PCG. Uh, first we're going to look at using it just like as is and then I'm going to show you a bit more like an advanced technique that I found while experimenting with it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start by just having a little scene and then opening up the graph and first of all I'm going to add the word ray hit query and then uh, this gives us a concrete data and that can be put into a surface sampler and when I debug this let me just save that and you can already see um, the hits kind of just going up and down and it's hitting every piece of geometry uh, let me just make this a bit bigger so it's actually apparent that it's being hit. I'm going to move these around. There you go. So yeah, um, let's go through the settings. So we have here in the World Hit Query a bunch of settings. The first that I think is pretty important for all the use cases I've had so far is check trace complex. And that means instead of uh, tracing against the basic collision it traces against the complex collision which you can see here especially on the branch uh, it's now fitting much more to the actual geometry. The next thing um, by default the ray query as far as I can tell goes from the top of the volume straight down so uh, if I just regenerate that you can also see let me make this like a lot bigger And then you can see it only hits the first ray. Uh, the first hit will be taken as a point. There's no like multi hits at the moment. Uh, but we can actually change the behavior of what is getting hit and where. So I'm just I'm gonna slide this setting in right here. Oh, come on. So first of all, we can um, select a bunch of stuff, sort of uh, to filter. So first of all we have ignore landscape bits which will you know just ignore the landscape. We can also add tag filters. So by default it'll just uh, hit against anything in a certain channel but if I say like I want to ignore this rock. So I can do go to actor tag filter click on exclude tagged and we'll just name it like no uh, and then on the actor itself, I'll look for tags, and there's an entry called actor tags. And if I add the same here, and then uh, quickly regenerate the graph, you can see it's getting ignored. No more hits, uh, so it's like invisible for the hit query. There's a bunch more. Um, so as I said, by default, it just goes um, down. You can actually give it a different direction. So um, you can click here, override default params, and then you can give it a ray origin and a ray direction. Um, I gotta be honest, I don't think it's super useful and it's on its own. So you can, let's say we wanna have not a hit that is just straight down, but goes like a bit to the sides. So we'll add this. You can see now the points are sort of going at an angle. Um, but uh, they still only are contained in the volume and it doesn't matter if you've moved the volume. So currently the hit spawns at 0, 0, 0. Um, if I move the volume up and let's you know get that back in, you can see there's not, nothing's happened. Like the, the ray hit position stays the same. So if I move this one up, and then um, I move this one up. It's still not hitting anything because the ray origin is still at this point somewhere, like at zero. Um, so if you want to make volumes or if you want to make PCGs, sort of like my vine generator, where you can just put it anywhere in the world and it'll just generate vines in that uh, position, then we need a bit of custom code to actually feed this position into um, the generator. So that's what I'm going to do next. Uh, I'll just quickly create a new blueprint. So let's uh, 
get new blueprint uh, an actor and we'll call this um, get world ray because I'm not very creative right now and then we'll add the PCG graph and in the uh, component and in the graph we'll add the world ray so there you go and then in the construction gra uh, construction script I'll call generate so that it um, actually generates something okay so I'm gonna remove this and add in my custom actor and nothing is happening and that's because again we need a bounce if you've watched the custom actor um, tutorial and in that I show how you actually need to add a bounce some some primitive that gives the actor like a bounding box otherwise PCG will just not generate anything so we'll make it rather big so like let's say 2000 by 2000 by 2000 compile it again and there you can see stuff is already happening um, let's go quickly to this and what I am going to do is I'm going to use custom properties from the actor and pass it into the hit query. So on my actor, I'm going to add two new properties. One I'm going to call PCG location, and that's going to be a vector. And then another one I call PCG direction, and that's also going to be a vector. And I'll make these two visible so the PCG graph can actually read them and then all I'm going to do in the uh, construction script is set the location to my actor location and set the PCG direction to actually the down um, vector so I get the actor up vector which is you know up and then I am going to multiply that by negative one that's going to make it the down vector. So essentially I'm going to restore the default behavior of the world ray hit, uh, where it's going to take the location as a start and it's going to take the direction of whatever the actor's down is pointing at. And then I'm going to quickly hook that up and format that because it should look nice. There we go. Um, and then in the back in the graph, I'm going to expose these properties. I'm going to get actor property. So this one we'll get from our custom actor and we'll put in PCG location. And that goes into ray origin. And then we add another one called PCG direction. That was the one I called it. Yes, okay and that goes into ray direction. And then I'm gonna close this up and make sure that override default params is enabled and you can already see these are grayed out because we are passing in custom ones and then compile everything and see what it does and you can already see something else is happening so since before it was sort of going straight down um, at an angle and now it's going straight down again uh, so now you can see it's hitting the the rock because where the origin is here is where the rays start and then actually if we go below the rock you can see the rays start from here so this rock is effectively ignored because it's no longer inside the volume. Um, I haven't found a way to like only overwrite one of these parameters so uh, and you can see it kind of goes straight, like goes at, a, at an angle wherever the actor is pointing. Um, now, one thing I've sort of noticed with this workflow is that it's kind of really hard to control where the ray is going and where it's coming from. Um, so another way to use the hit query is by generating points before and then projecting them onto the query. And that seems to work much better. So I'm gonna do that next. 
So uh, first thing I'm going to do is generate a bunch of points with, in this case, I'm just going to use create points from grid. And um, let's make this the length of the volume. And I'm going to uh, quickly check how they look. So uh, actually going to have to increase their debug size, I think, otherwise they're not going to show up because uh, they are relative. And let's see. There we go. So they are created now, um, but I actually want them to be centered in the generator. So I'm going to check local. And then you can see it creates them in the local space of the generator. And now instead of the surface sampler, I am going to use a projection node. And I'm going to plug the points into in and the query into the projection target. And then I am going to debug that. And again, it's too small because the points extend is small. So we'll There we go, set that to relative. And then you can already see the points are all projected onto the uh, stuff below. And I'm going to apply a noise because the points are all white and it's really hard to differenti differentiate between them. And then I'm going to debug that because that's going to make it a bit easier to tell the points apart. So there you can see them. And with this, setup, uh, I can basically rotate this generator however I want. So um, if I'm going to go up here and you can see it's all projected onto the geometry below. And if I make it, you know, however I want, so you can see the points are just kind of scattered everywhere in the landscape. Um, and yeah, also upside down is also possible. Just got to make sure the points kind of are below this. So what I'm thinking, I haven't looked at the code itself, but I'm thinking the node works in a way that when there's already a point and you want to project it onto the geometry, it kind of only takes um, the projected start and direction and it doesn't like take the actual point um, that we passed in. So like it's if, if a point is here, it will go and go into this direction, uh, taking like the x, y coordinate um, of the point and the z coordinate of the position we passed we passed in as a parameter. So that's that seems to be what the node is doing from my experimentation. And another thing is if so, let's say I'm going to put it like this again. You can see they go like all the way into the sunset essentially. Uh, if we add uh, if we change the ray length to let's say let's say like five thousand. And regenerate. Okay, that's maybe too. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Now it's five thousand. And you can see it starts cutting off points. So if the ray doesn't hit anything, so if there's a point and you project it onto the ray uh, query and there isn't any hit, the point will be cut. Uh, same if I rotate this upwards, the points that hit anything will be kept and the points that kind of go into nothing will be cut. And yeah, I think that concludes most of the things the world ray hit query is good for um, and doing. And uh, for the rest of these, oh, okay, there's one more thing. Um, if you click, uh, if you check get reference to actor hit, and let me just, um, Debug these. Oh, come on. Then, whenever a point is projected on something, it will add a actor reference attribute and will, like, add the soft pointer, the soft object address to it. So, if you want to do decisions in your PCG graph based on what the point is projected on, this is how you can do it. Uh, it gives it a, like a an extra data pin. Uh, and I think that's it. 
uh, the rest is pretty much self-explanatory. Um, you can also, um, you know, get reference to physical materials. You can make it so it doesn't uh, hit anything PCG or it hits itself or stuff like that. So uh, I think these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, the only thing I really stumbled upon was, you know, the kind of unintuitive way the ray origin and ray direction were working. So I think that's um, sort of with the setup. And yeah, I hope that helps. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.